Hey, welcome to Vice Grip Garage. We're packing up our 1970 Cadillac Sedan DeVille for a 2,000 mile road trip. Great. Today's leg is over 630 miles from Tennessee all the way to Norwalk, Ohio for the start of Hot Rod Power Tour. Now keep in mind, this is an untested car. I pulled this out of a swamp. It was abandoned there for over a decade. Everything should, you know, it's gonna be fine. No nope. imminent failure. You fellers and fellettes are probably a little confused. Where is a guy? Different dimension? Nope. This is the new Vice Grip Garage headquarters in Tennessee. We're in the process of moving, and as you can see, we're not moved in at all. We've got lifts to get in here. We've got all of our tools and shelving and junk, but we're getting there. If you're not familiar with Hot Rod Power Tour, the easiest way to explain it is the world's largest traveling car show. So it's five different cities in five days. And each day at the event, there's something different. There could be drag racing, there could be autocross, could be nothing, music, I don't know. There's vendors and just hundreds, actually thousands of cars, everything from classics to new stuff. And the challenge and the fun of it is just getting there. So can these old cars make it from city to city, sit through traffic, go down the highway, stuff like that. And they do a really good job with the routes, winding you through back roads and things like that. So if you haven't done it before, check it out. It's pretty fun. As if the stakes weren't already high enough, driving an abandoned car on this that has, I maybe have 85 miles on this. I'm jamming my entire family in this thing, so. Guy's a little nervous, but we're gonna see what we could do here. I think I've got it with the amount of time I have left and we're leaving really late today. It's already about 10 a.m. Got the points in it. It was idling a little rough, starting to miss on me. It's got, of course, all the new stuff that we've put on it before. So spark lighters, lightning hoses, lightning whirler stuff. Put a new air filter, checked all the fluids on it. Should check them again. Yep, 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 okay, we're good there. Of course, we got the new tires, everything like that. I'm over here packing tools and Berryman. Jessica's in the house getting, I don't know, she does everything else, socks, toothpaste and stuff. But this is all I'm bringing. Uh, I got Harbor Freight toolkit, my O'Reilly's toolkit, some miscellaneous stuff. Bringing a digital fan in case she gets warm on a guy. And then I got a jack to put in here. And we agreed to split the trunk. So this is what I'm working with here, fellers. No spare tire. That's the right thing to do. Oh, I gotta put my gas cap back on. Put a can of Berryman's in last night. Got to put the lid back on. We should have plenty of room though. My three boys are growing like weeds and that was one of the reasons we decided to take this. So I'll have a little bit more room. It's like two couches, you know. I did get a sniggerette lighter working. So we're gonna have some juice for some JIP system on the pocket computer. But that's really about it. We'll throw a suitcase in this thing and jam it on the road. So our route's gonna be a little bit different because we're gonna go from Tennessee up to Norwalk and then we're gonna follow the trail. I believe it goes to Dayton, Ohio, Indianapolis, St. Louis, Missouri. Where was the other one? Champagne, Illinois? I think that's a town or something, city maybe. But anywho's, from there, we're not gonna come back to Tennessee. We've gotta go all the way up to Minnesota because we gotta get the rest of our stuff and try to finish moving. So we've got all sorts of a wonky trip going on here, but it ends up being just a tickle over 2,000 miles. Looking forward to this. Let's go see how Jessica's doing with her stuff. She better be ready. No, because I'm not ready yet either. Well, I guess this is fully loaded. We did a lot better on space, but I mean, family of five plus tools, we still have extra room in here, so that's not so bad. That's, you know, this is editing stuff. Guy broke his screen on his laptop and they wanted 500 some dollars to fix it. Nope, $90 Walmart TV, so 
Downside is I got to carry that with me everywhere, but it gets it done. I've never done this before, but we're going to try to bring you every single day of Hot Rod Power Tour in its own video, back to back, to back to back, to back. I don't know. We'll give it a whirl. Before we hit the road, just topping her off with fuel here. It's going to be nice having a fuel gauge. I'm going to run non-ethanol as much as possible. This has got 10% corn in it. Dang it. Hopefully we can find some along the route. Some people are pretty good about putting on the route where non-ethanol stuff is, and even E85 for those running that. Well, here we go. We're loaded up. We got all the snacks. Boys, you got everything you need? Yep. All right, get your seat belts on. It's gonna get crazy. No, we're gonna just cruise, actually. First stop is, uh, well, not stop. First big town we gotta go through is we gotta sneak around Nashville here real quick. And then we're up to, I don't know. We'll just figure it out, huh? Yeah. When we run out of snacks, that'll be our next stop. Or fuel, whichever one. I think snacks is probably important. priority. <laughs> here it's dinner time already we are way behind this is gonna put us in uh, where are we going Ohio mm -hmm. at what like 9 or 11 million late yep dark o'clock bacon cheeseburgers all the way around yep yep <laughs> I think I'm gonna get me some spicy dogs what yep. are you getting yep with some honey mustard oh good yeah bacon bourbon burger sure <laughs> guys got some nuggets some dip you know Let's try to get some miles put down here before we stop again, huh? Please. <laughs> Got about three quarters tank of gas. I think we'll run that down until the needle snaps off the E and test the capacity right away. Door buzzer still buzzing. Well, I chickened out. Fuel gauge got to empty, and I thought maybe we'd run her down to the E. There's got to be five more gallons in there. But I didn't want the little humans walking or sitting in the car today. It's hot. I don't mind walking. We'll fill her up again. We did blow the muffler out on this thing. Sounds like a grain truck going uphill. So that's really good. We'll leave it. And that's from all the HPs under the hood. Nope. That's because the muffler sat in mud for 15 years. It's gonna get pretty annoying, but I think if we wrap that muffler tape on it, that's not gonna do much, so we'll just keep ignoring it. Car's running great though, overall. Not really having any issues at all. Doesn't seem to be getting hot or anything like that. I'll pop the hood in a minute and uh, check the oil. Developing a really small, small valve cover leak there. That one's bone dry. Don't see any coolant leaking anywhere. Water pump isn't weeping. Well, it's about 195, maybe 200 at most. I think we're doing pretty good here, actually. Knock on wood. Oil is right on the money. Great news, it's not drinking that up. It never really has smoke, so that's fantastic. Now we know the engine's probably gonna be just fine. Transmission, eh. Long road trips like this, where you're just putting down a couple hundred miles at a time, it's usually a axle bearing or wheel bearing, rear end, U-joint, stuff like that is kind of what shuts a guy down. So we're gonna try to pay attention as much as we can to that stuff, but I'm really happy about this. It really sings down the highway. We don't have any abnormal heat. We can keep an eye on those pretty easily. See what kind of gallons we 
drank down 14 oh we had plenty of room all right well we'll do the math on the mpghrf's well we're well over 200 miles into this trip and i just did the math magicianals three times because i'm just i'm mind bottled i keep coming up with 14.4 miles per gallon what that's i don't know you got five people on here trunk is loaded to the ground we're riding on the bump stops 75 miles an hour and she's still pulling 14 miles a gallon that is mighty impressive out of the old cadillac big block i'm backing up look out neck don't work very good get you guys under here see this muffler she is clean blowed out that's probably going to get worse and just keep going down the entire length of the muffler which means we'll most likely end up with uh, just a straight pipe that's that's fine actually huh. if you were to guess on the mile per gallon what would you say how far did we just go we're well over 200 miles but i mean miles per gallon right but i'm trying to figure out um 14. how did you know is it really yes <laughs> no way yes i don't know it's just never that came to me <laughs> You cheated somehow. I didn't. I was just thinking like... Okay. We're so used to getting around 10 miles to the gallon with big blocks. So we're pretty excited if you could tell. That's going to keep the cost down. I was a little bit nervous when we left about how much we're going to spend in fuel. But that's awesome. You got goodies ready to go? Yep. Did you guys find some stuff? Yep. All buckled in? Yep. Yep. All right. Let's do it. So we didn't book our hotels like any of them ever because quite frankly, we didn't know where we were gonna be. And we got in from Missouri last night or something like that. Yeah, like midnight, yeah. Midnight, so we just packed the car and took off. So Jessica's job today is gonna to be on top of everything else she does already, is try to find some hotels. A lot of them are gonna be sold out right close to the event, but we don't like really staying at those anyway because traffic's so congested and it's, you know, so we, we like to go on the outskirts a little bit. We like the road. Yeah, and it gets cheaper. Plus you find some really cool cafes and diners and gas stations and antique shops and, you know, cars. May come home with another one. decided to use Waze today for mapping. Sometimes we use the Google machines, but we couldn't figure out why it was winding us through all these back roads, which was pretty cool because we saw a lot of uh, horse property yeah. and miles and miles and miles of fence. Well, anyway, we finally get back on the interstate and yeah, she's plugged up pretty good. Actually, it just added like another 18 minutes to our trip, so that's fine. If we don't stop the rest of the way, which we'll have to, it has us getting in around 10 o'clock tonight, which is perfect. <laughs> so I had a couple hours more for eating and fuel, but I guess it gives a chance for the car to cool down. I don't even know that it's getting hot. Nice not having a gauge, you know, you just... Don't have to really worry. Yeah, it seems fine. But pretty country. Somewhere in Kentucky right now, right? Scott County is what it says. Scott County? Yeah. Nice countryside, lots of rock, more than you'd think. All right, starting to free up a little bit, so. Here we go.
it's about 6 30 sun's fixing to go down we just swerved off i think we're going to get a bite to eat and go to the garden of olives i think yep their breadsticks are just i could just eat them i guess and then we've got i think what was it 200 miles 220 miles 270 it's 200 some miles left after that and it's actually perfect timing because we need fuel anyway so just finished eating over there and we was swanging over to get some fuel and guy latched his peepers into these vacuums so Jessica's is going to get the rest of the mice skulls and stuff out of here as we're driving it's kind of swirling stuff up Ooh, we lost a mic and ike there dude well, we're going to get this vacuumed up tomorrow morning is the show essentially we'll run her through a car wash probably when we get there dress up the walls that are white again i didn't know this had a flapper on it does the other side i don't think so nope so i don't know maybe we'll take that off maybe we'll leave it on not quite sure yet i originally forgot the vacuum was out when we did the first clean and i think jessica came in to clean it and opened this up and a giant mouse nest came flying out <laughs> what do you think of the trip so far it's really fun Having a good time? Yeah. Is there a lot of room back here? Yeah, just keep going hot sometimes. These hoses are getting shorter. A guy swears it. Any hoose. I'm gonna dig in my supplies here, get a funnel, put a splash of that in, and put a can of barium in it. Probably gonna do every other tank. Throw one of those in there. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, I know what that is. That's the, uh, Air shock line. Oh, yeah. She just bit the dust. Well, I never got around to fixing this. Maybe, you know, a guy might find a repair kit. They usually have a roll of this and a couple fittings. And if I can get this line patched, then we can actually get some air. I just wanted to check while this was open to see if I remembered my glasses. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jessica likes to pack empty cases of things. Nothing's moved at all in here, actually. Got him. Got him? Yes. <laughs> okay. 13 gallons. Let's go. We have 68 miles left to go. Betty's surgeon is going down the road okay. I'm gonna take a look at the fuel filter. It might have brought some stuff through the fuel lines, even though I back flushed them. I'm running fresh fuel, it might have some junk in there, but it's acting like it's starving for fuel. It was kinda, you know, surge laden. So I'm gonna jump in the trunk, grab a flashlight. Jessica's gonna do that. I promise I won't yell at you if you're holding it wrong. We'll take a look at that first and see what's going on. Fill filter's full. It does have some rust right there. But it doesn't warrant changing this. So then we start to get worried about is the fuel pump going out. Really the only other option that would cause that is if the needles 
getting sticky. So I guess we'll pop the hood, adjust on the fuel, make it happen, and by that I mean bang on it with my Leatherman and see what that does. I'm gonna try to crack the fuel line, let the fuel make it happener, and then we'll probably crank it over. And well, where do I put this thing for Pete's sake? There we go. Oh, this is hot, whatever this thing is. I told you not to burn yourself. Uh, ouch, that's hot, whatever this thing is. And then we'll know if the fuel pump is working or if we got fuel make it happen or issues. There is a very slight chance a piece of that rust that we saw in that filter somehow made it through and has plugged up an orifice. That's what we're hoping for, right? That'd be like best case scenario. Yeah, because this fixes that. Yeah. But worst case, fuel pumps out. Uh oh. We might be able to crawl into town at a slower speed, but let me grab some tools, see what we can do. So the predicament I'm in here is when I'm trying to back off this nut, like always, the bigger nut which retains the filter and the bog jet spins with it. I can't fit anything in here because of the AC. Tried to take the nut off down below off the fuel pump. Of course that's just, it's gone. She's stripped. So a little trick there, just put your fingers on the fuel line coming off the filter going into the inlet of the pump and you can actually feel the diaphragm. So the fuel pump is pumping, but I don't really have a way to tell it's weak without getting that line off so I can observe the pressure. The charging water belt is significantly loose, so I'm gonna... Is that what that squeaking was? Yeah, see I can roll it over. So I'll tighten that up so we don't burn that off. I think for tonight, I'm just gonna ease it in or try. Hit my head on this about 17 times. <laughs> That's good. So, tighten that, put all this back together, and why don't we just try to get to the motel? Sounds good. Well, we made it to the motel, and it actually ran pretty darn decent on the way here, actually. Guy stuck his foot in it, opened the four barrels of Freedom, I don't know how many times, nine. It sang to me just fine. So, the likelihood that it's a chunk of debris just floating through one of the underwater caves and the fuel making happener is, you know, it's up there. Because we have to remember, I did move this car around I don't know, 15, 20 times on and off the lift around the shop. And I did not have a filter up front yet. Remember, we put that filter in just recently. So it, I'm sure it pulled some junk up. And before that, I had it on the boat tank. And we had one or two filters on that. So I think that's probably the issue. Some guy just came whizzing by on a bicycle with neon lights and a boom boom box never seen the sorts so anyway i think we're gonna leave it be for tonight the kids are really tired we're all tired pretty long day over 600 miles today the engine however is getting stronger and stronger it's running better so what you got to do with these old rigs that have been sitting or you haven't driven in a while put some fresh gas in it throw some oil in the thing take it out on the highway and just feed her the onions and she'll come back around for you we're gonna figure out what we're gonna to do tomorrow. I've got a really tight schedule. We've got some obligations this week. So maybe we'll do a motel carburetor rebuild. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Tomorrow is the official start of Hot Rod Power Tour. Norwalk, Ohio, I think so. Of course, we're gonna bring you guys along with us. Thanks guys for watching, appreciate it very much. See you next time.